things that helps is to, is to simply normalize people's experience. I was uh, misdiagnosed in the 80s. Um, I had PTS and they didn't catch it in the 80s and I didn't get a diagnosis until a few years ago and had to work through this thing myself. So one of the things that I do, and I'm very open about my PTSD, I don't talk about, I don't do the war porn stuff, I don't talk about the stuff that made me the way I am, but I'm happy to talk about my journey to relative wellness and the work that has to be done to stay healthy, the stuff you have to do to move away from, from, from that illness. It's something that's with me all the time and it's become a passenger in my life. I don't, I don't ignore it and I don't specifically embrace it, but I'm fully aware of it and I'm not ashamed of it in any way. I got hurt at work. I got injured at work and part of what made me sicker than I needed to be was because of the stuff that I put through my own head. If you ever go for counseling, yeah, the, the current you know, best practice for, for treatment for PTS is something called cognitive behavioral theory. The cognitive part is what's your thinking? And our thinking drives our feelings. So we, when, when you're trying to help someone or you're trying to ask some questions and trying to be supportive, you always support people's feelings because they're real and they're genuine. But you can sometimes challenge the thinking that drives those feelings because it can be flawed. And a lot of times the flawed thinking that we have is stuff we bring on ourselves. We tell, Especially in this business, we often personalize stuff that isn't about us. You know, the, the, in the years of peer support work that I've done, I didn't do any work about fires. People didn't typically want a, a, to, do, to have a, a mental health debrief over something that went poorly at a fire. But the single truck responses to medical calls, that seems to be where a lot of it occurs. It's inside your intimate space, you're involved with families, you're seeing a whole lot of, of drama and trauma all at one time. Sometimes we tend to personalize those experiences and they become our stories. And the reality is, they're not. All of that stuff would have happened whether you were there or not. Whether you responded or not. Are your accidents of time and space? So if we were aware of that sort of stuff, it helps us not build a false narrative inside of our own minds and further stigmatize our own selves against getting care. Just a thought. I just put it on your radar. You can, you know, you can discard it if you like. Where do you think stigma really comes from? To speak to not so much where it comes from, but what it looks like for us, it's mostly straightforward how we treat each other and what we expect of one another.